The Mandel Fleming model describes how changes in monetary and physical policy affect interest rates and economic activity, which in turn will lead to changes in capital flows and trade flows, and eventually affect the exchange rate. So the model focuses on the aggregate demand and assumes that there is sufficient capacity in the economy to allow increases in output without price level increases. So to understand the impact of monetary and physical policy on exchange rates, we need to first determine if the capital mobility is high or low. If there is high capital mobility, so that would mean that the impact on the exchange rate will come through capital flows. If the capital mobility is low, then the impact on exchange rate will come through trade flows. We'll first start off by assuming that capital mobility is high which means that capital is free to flow in and out of the market. So assuming that the physical policy is expansionary, which means that there is increase in government spending or lower taxes, so the budget deficit will become larger and larger. And this deficit needs to be financed. So government will need to borrow more money, which would then lead to higher interest rates. And higher rates would then attract capitals from lower yielding markets. So the more capital that flows in, that means the higher the demand for the domestic currency. And that will lead to a appreciation in the, the domestic currency. Now on the other hand, if the physical policy is restrictive, there will be a reduced government spending or higher taxes, which leads to a smaller deficit. So interest rates will decrease and that will lead to a capital outflow to higher yielding markets. So when the foreign investors pull out their capital from the investments, that, may, that will lead to a depreciation in domestic currency. If monetary policy is expansionary, there will be a decrease in interest rates, which will lead to a capital outflow to higher yielding markets, and hence the domestic currency will depreciate. If monetary policy is restrictive, then we'll see interest rates increasing which means that there will be capital inflows from lower yielding markets. So there will be appreciation in the domestic currency. If we combine these permutations of the policies, so we can see that under a high capital mobility, when we have an expansionary monetary policy where interest rates are low and a restrictive physical policy where interest rates is also low, the domestic currency will depreciate. Uh, in the case of a restrictive monetary policy where interest rate is high and uh, in an expansionary physical policy where interest rate is high as well, then the domestic currency will appreciate. But if the monetary policy is restrictive while the physical policy is also restrictive, we have a high low interest rate versus a high interest rate so we can't determine the impact on the exchange rate. Now, a similar thing can be said on the other grid where the monetary policy is expansionary and the physical policy is expansionary. So again, we can't determine the impact on exchange rate because in an expansionary monetary policy, interest rate is low, which should result in a depreciation in domestic currency. But an expansionary physical policy would tell us that the domestic currency would appreciate. So we can't really tell the direction. Moving on to the next part, we look at low capital mobility, which means that capital cannot flow easily in and out of the market. So in this case, the trade flow will actually dominate. So trade flow, in other words, we look at exports and imports. Now again, we look at the different policies. So if you have expansionary physical policy, there will be increase in the spending from government and there will be lower taxes. So this will lead to a larger budget deficit. So we will see an increase in imports, okay, which means that the trade balance will actually worsen. So the larger the trade deficit, then the more the domestic currency will depreciate. Now in a restrictive physical policy, the governments will reduce their spending and we, can, we may also see higher taxes. So there will be a decrease in imports, so leading to an improvement in the trade balance and the domestic currency will then appreciate. So when I say increase in imports or decrease in imports, it is relative to exports. Okay? Now, if you have expansionary monetary policy, again, uh, interest rates will decrease. So this will lead to further investment in the economy and also more consumer spending. So this will lead to, again, more imports. And more imports means that domestic currency will depreciate. 
Now for restrictive monetary policy, interest rates are high. So this will lead to less spending and uh, investment and uh, imports will decrease and domestic currency will appreciate. So again, if you combine all these different combinations, this time for low capital mobility, if you have a restrictive monetary policy and a restrictive physical policy, then we will see domestic currency appreciating. And in an expansionary monetary and physical policy, domestic currency will depreciate. And if you have an expansionary monetary policy and restrictive physical policy, then it's, you, we can't determine the actual direction. It's not that clear. And same, similarly for restrictive monetary policy and expansionary physical policy, we are not able to determine the direction of the exchange rate. So keep in mind that under low capital mobility, you have to ask yourself, how does the trade flow change okay, in relation to the policy? Okay, whether imports will increase or decrease. So more spending means more ag higher aggregate demand, which means more imports. More imports will lead to a depreciation in domestic currency. And of course, a decrease in imports relative to exports will lead to domestic currency appreciating.